All right, so last week we got sick, so we didn't get to talk about Storm of Fuck. Which was a great title for me. I don't even think I can put that on YouTube as a title. Like, I'm reviewing Storm of Fuck, like in the... You could bleep out the... Oh, I don't want to do that. little asterisk. No, I don't censor. Censor, censorship is for pussies. Then just spell out fuck. (laughs) See if it gets flagged. Yeah, just do it then. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Either. I'll just put episode two and three spoiler discussion. Anyways, we'll we'll, we'll worry about that after. <laughs> so the storm of fuck. We're just gonna talk about both of them together. Yes. So um, Dexter is uh, slipping. She sure is. And uh, Harrison is what we kind of suspected. He's um, I don't know. Got some. Got a dark side. He's got he's some got dark a, tendencies. He's got a dark passenger himself. Yeah. Well, maybe, but. Um, no, I'm not really. That would be pretty interesting if he also has some too projection. Convenient. But yeah, he. Uh, you know, he's really intelligent. He's obviously spent a lot of time uh, taking care of himself, which he says constantly throughout both of the episodes, um, and. I'm glad. I'm glad to see that he, you know, is maybe like his dad. I'm. I'm kind of thinking that there's a chance that he is going to make a mistake. Um, and Harrison. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, that he's going to hurt somebody or kill somebody or something, and Dexter's going to have to help him cover it up. Um, just because, like you mentioned in the in episode three, he doesn't really hide it that well from people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's not um, so, trying to hide it like Dexter. He's very open about his yeah. aggression and and his past. And, yes. You know, he, because he hasn't had the training by someone like Harry. Right. Right. And so I don't. I yeah. I, I think I have a feeling that he might uh, make a mistake and you know get into some trouble and Dexter will have to help him and then that's kind of what initiates the the training because I sort of see him pushing back if Dexter tries to start before. <coughs> there's any kind of indication i think there needs to be some sort of like show of like oh like you have that in you too for him to even begin to talk to harrison about it because like where we are right now dexter is still very much like kind of split but i feel like he's leaning more towards uh not wanting to kill again like he wants to have this normal life which he always does though he always kind (laughs) of wants to have this be a normal person yeah. and have a family and everything. Um, of course, now that he's gotten a taste, he sort of, and he even makes a comment that like, that him not killing for so long is kind of what's fucked him in this situation. Uh, because he's slipping. He's rusty. Yeah. Yeah. I th- Okay. As far as Harrison goes, yes, there's one of two ways it's going to go. He's either killed before mm-hmm. or he hasn't yet but he has the tendencies and Dexter's going to catch it before I could see it going the route of his newfound friend that he makes in episode three wants to do a school shooting. Yeah. Um, he obviously has this tendency right now. He's drawing pictures of him killing people as the punisher in his school. (laughs) That's why you don't fuck with people. Yeah. That's why you're not, you shouldn't be a bully because you know, pushers get pushed. The same As, thing in like Scrooge that we watched with the <laughs> Well yeah, I mean people yeah. people can only be pushed so far. Right. Right? Yes, Elliot Laddermilk <laughs> from Scrooge gets pushed too far yeah. and he comes after Frank Cross with a shotgun because of it. I it mean, doesn't yeah, it doesn't make it okay for people to, you know, still no. do it, but it's just you should treat people better because you don't know where the breaking point is for anyone. But it okay. Much like heaven and hell and all that stuff. I'm not somebody who doesn't do things because of consequence. I don't do things because I'm not an asshole. Right? right? Like, you shouldn't not pick on somebody because they might shoot you. No. Don't pick on someone because you shouldn't fucking pick on people. You shouldn't be a bully. Yes. Right? Like, I'm saying, yes, this is a repercussion that can come from bullying or, or being shitty to people. But even if none of those things ever happen and you live a wonderful life, your whole fucking, you know, existence, um, you should bully people. No, absolutely. Right? Like, this is not a good thing. Anyways. Absolutely. But even, like, just, you know, people in passing, like, strangers and stuff, right? Like, this, it's the same kind of thing where it's like, you really don't know who you're dealing with. So you should try and be, like, you know, nice as you can. Not, like, in a fake way. But that's sure. what I mean. You're courteous, I guess. Not necessarily, like, you have to be nice. 
and you have to get along with everyone, but there's like a certain level of courtesy that I think everyone is owed until they prove otherwise. Sure. It's pleasant um, to be pleasant. Yeah. And I, you know, and I was, I was a very dark and rebellious teenager who thought the whole world was out to get me. And we all go through that for the most part. I mean, some of us don't, but a lot of us do. And when I started being, you know, when I started as a hairdresser, I was very quiet and was like, all right, come on over here and like, let's do your hair. And I was like, <laughs> you know, I couldn't, I couldn't communicate and I yeah. couldn't, and I didn't like people. I really just genuinely didn't want to talk to anybody. But as I got over that and as I started talking to people and I've been in the business for almost 20 years now, I actually like talking to people. I actually like being pleasant in public. Like I like people. Yeah. You know, yes. <clears throat> Some people suck a hundred percent. And sure. right now times are pretty fucking crazy, <clears throat> but I still try not to focus on that because you don't want to get, you don't want to get wrapped up in people's, you know, beliefs or, or, you know, their political affiliations or any of that stuff. Like you got to take a person for a person. Yeah. There are some things that are too far, um, you know, that you can't be, but anyways, let's not get too off track here. <laughs> so, I just think that that's important. Yeah. And that getting back to where we were going is that I think that, I think that they could almost plan a school shooting and, yeah. and Dexter find out about it and be like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. Um, you know, I probably won't go down that road, but I could definitely see this new friend um, taking him down a dark road that he is kind of, um, you know, potentially going to go down eventually on his own. Yeah. But this kind of speeds the process up. Or... And this is something I've been thinking for since the first episode. One of the rules of television or movies is if you don't see someone die, they're not dead. And shit, even in some scenarios, even if you see them die, they're not dead. Um, but for the most part, if you don't see someone die, you always have to question and keep up the possibility, keep open the possibility that someone's still alive. Mm -hmm. So now, the Hannah McKay thing for me is A... She didn't want to come back. So right. they had to write her out of the show. B, the writers didn't want her back because she didn't fit the story, so they wrote her out. C, she isn't dead. Mm. And Harrison's lying about this and ran away from her because she's crazy. Yeah. And she's now looking for him. Or D, he killed her. Yes. You know, because who knows why. Um, he found out that she tried to poison his aunt and sure. who the fuck knows? I mean, I just think the, the whole, I feel like Hannah McKay could show up yeah. in this show and be like, uh, season, season finale. Sure. Like she shows up at the door or somewhere in town and Dex is like, I thought you were dead. And mm -hmm. it's like, dun, 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 season two. Right. Yeah. I definitely can see that as a possibility. I'm going to go out and I'm going to guess now. That Harrison has not killed before. I'm sort of torn because I feel like he either has killed her or or that he hasn't yet. So you think he, the only kill that he's made is Hannah McKay or nobody? No, sorry, no, I don't. I don't mean it in that phrasing. Oh. I think that he likely has killed her and maybe other people. Mm. Or he hasn't killed anybody. Um, what are you leaning towards? From this episode. I'm leaning more towards he's killed before. I, it's mostly, well, it's so hard. And I don't know, I could see both ways. And especially, like, his reaction to his new friend's, like, drawings is one of, like, interest. And, like, kind of, like, he's into it, you know? Like, he doesn't really sure. reprimand him or be like, no, dude, that's fucked. Like, he's, like, kind of smiling and stuff when he's looking at him. Absolutely. So that shows an, either an interest in it or, like, a, like, hell yeah, like, I've done that before. And that's cool. Um, so I don't know. I'm, I guess I'm not leaning towards either strongly. So in the first season of Dexter, we find out that Dexter was born in blood, right? Like mm -hmm. his mom and, and his family were killed and he was laying in the blood and this and that, right? And then we find out he has a brother and his brother was also in the blood and they both became killers because of this. Well, at the end of season four, Harrison is also sat in blood yes. because... You know, Trinity is trying to recreate that scenario for Dexter. Um, and so it is possible that 
this is a cycle and, and mm. now Dexter's son has been born in the same vein as he mm. and now he's mimicking his father. Now whether or not he is aware of this because Hannah told him like mm. your father was a serial killer and this you know sparked his interest in it or if he just became had it, it. Yeah. And, and he's coming and he's going to find out like oh shit this is where I got it from. Yeah. The title of the show New Blood to me suggests that Dexter is going to see his son's tendencies mm -hmm. and he's going to take him under his wing and guide him to be the new blood. He's going to be the new Dexter Morgan. Yeah. Right? I, I just... Well, absolutely. I do think that's where the show is going. I guess, for me, the only thing that I think is uh, unclear that I haven't been decided on is whether or not Harrison has killed before or whether or not he will be taught how to kill by Dexter. Or taught how to kill properly, I should say. Because I still think it's really, I don't know, I, I can definitely see him just fucking up a kill. And Dexter really having to show him the, the right way to do it. I think um, he's going to get himself in some serious trouble with these guys at school. Yes. Right? This is, this is all, undoubtedly what Harrison is going to get himself wrapped up yes. in. Whether he kills them or whether or not he assaults them and Dexter catches him in the middle of it or... Whatever happens, or he decides that's who he wants to go after. Yeah. I mean, what they're doing to this kid by sending him catfish email, uh, well, text messages and whatnot is fucked up. Uh, death seems a little strong. Sure. Um, the, the kid that they're all looking for, I had no problem with him dying. This kid seems like a total piece of shit. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, and he already, he killed somebody purposefully as well, so he's yes, a murderer. He is. I think... Killed five people. Yeah. Right? Five? Right. I think it was five. Uh, four or five. Four or five people died. Oh. For uh, sure. I don't know why I was thinking it was just one person. No. 100% at accident. least four or five. I think it's five. Um, yeah, he's an asshole for sure. And with Harrison too, like, since he, he kind of, he makes a comment about, you know, traveling around, because she's, he, uh, the, the sheriff's daughter right is kind of becoming friends with him and she's like those guys are assholes or whatever and you know you can't really pick who you're friends with in a small town bullshit. which is bullshit for sure but he's like i wouldn't know what that's like like i've never stayed in one place for long i definitely think like i agree with you i don't i don't think those kids deserve death for catfishing uh you know this other guy and, and bullying him although it's really messed up no they deserve but harrison if that's, you know, the case of him, like, moving and not really ever planting in one spot, like, you know, he sees all these, like, negative sides of people. So there's a chance that he doesn't see that, like, you know, you can make really stupid mistakes as a kid, as a teenager, and still grow up to be a good person. Or sure. still grow up to be, you know, like, that's if that's the worst you do in your life, like, there's a lot of people that do way worse. That's why school shootings so, happen, right? It's yeah. like... You can't see, and this is why a lot of kids struggle in high school. Now, yeah. social media has maybe evolved this to a degree, but when you were in high school, that was your worldview, yes. and, and everyone around you was pretty much the citizens of the world, and everything that ever happened was, you know, going to be etched in, uh, you know, the annals of the history of the world. Yeah. Like you were never gonna f forget this, and all these people meant so much, and. And when you get out of high school and you fast forward the clock a few years, especially 10 years, oh my God, and you realize that that was such a small, itty bitty portion sure. of your experience and that most of those people don't even fucking remember you sure. and that a lot of those events don't even matter and you can barely remember that anymore. So, it, you know, you, you're very uh, contained uh, in, in a small space mentally and and literally mm -hmm. uh in a school and, and you get so wrapped up in what people care uh think about you and you care so much about it and it's really not important i mean yeah. for anyone who's struggling with something like that i don't know if anyone watches this who's going to a fucking high school but i can assure you that like these things don't matter like nobody's going to give a shit in a few years so yeah. don't get wrapped up in it no i agree but there's also definitely like formative things that can happen in high school that do stick with you you know maybe not the things you think that will like sure. the people that you're like oh yeah this is going to matter so much but there's other things that can definitely stay with you you know your whole life and kind of influence a lot of your behaviors and you know there's people for sure that struggle with kind of uh, rewiring their brain absolutely you know because you're so malleable when you're young um 
but the point of what I'm agree, saying is that you like, shouldn't let those things you should get that's to what you. I was saying I agree with and you shouldn't let them shape who you become yeah. to that degree right like your high school experience and any part of your experience of life throughout till you die shapes who you become but you shouldn't let it negatively impact you to the point where yeah. you're depressed and you won't have friends and you won't go out like that's not the way to be right mm -hmm. and that's not good for you but anyways um so moving on uh i think we got a good you know summation of of our uh you know what's going on with harrison and what we think is going to go on with harrison mm -hmm. um dexter uh is talking to his you know dark passenger deb and uh i i'm really uh, into this whole it only happens once and I want to see it more Deb taking over the role of somebody else. Uh, he's talking to like the principal mm -hmm. and Deb's in her clothes with like her hairstyle and shit. Yeah. I love that. I was like, Oh, we need more of that. It's messed up. I mean, because it just shows, you know, how deeply mentally unwell Dexter is because it's like, that's a hallucination. I mean, she, the dark passenger is a hallucination and like a fractured part of his psyche yeah. that he's talking to. Like it's still him, but to see it projected like on another person is it, you know, it just shows it like how much of his reality is he going to start questioning and kind of, you know, how much, I, I don't know. I think that's really cool though. And they should definitely do it more. Yeah. Um, and I also really loved when Deb was, when he was, you know, trying to puzzle over yeah. how to dispose of the body and she's like throwing it into a uh, wood chipper yeah. and it's splattering everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was great. It's good. It's that like is Dark fun. humor, you know? That and is that's dark one of the humor. the things about Dexter that is cool is that there are moments like that where there's, you know, dark humor and it works really well in the show. It's definitely the funniest moment for me of the show so far yes. out of the three episodes because... There's like three kids walking yeah. by and she's doing it and they're like not noticing that no. they're being sprayed with blood. And she's like so happy and like laughing about yes. it and stuff. That's so. great stuff. Yeah. And that harkens back to the first few seasons of Dexter mm. when it was really playful. Yes. And, and very darkly comedic. Yeah. And this show, the first episode, while there is some sort of levity because of the character that we know from previous seasons being this almost comedic dark character i didn't feel like there was a sense of levity in it much mm -mm. and that was a, a fun moment that that did kind of take me back mm -hmm. to um earlier seasons of the show before things started getting real dark um and so now I could be wrong on this, of course, but I've seen Clancy Brown for many, many years. Whether whether it was in Shawshank Redemption or even Pet Cemetery Two, which she wants to watch because she just finished Pet Cemetery's novel. Um, the guy who shoots the girl hunting is wearing the mask. Those are Clancy Brown's eyes. Like I'm like ninety nine fucking percent sure. Mm -hmm. Now. At the end of episode three, he claims that his son FaceTimed him. This wasn't a phone call. This was a FaceTime. Now, Dexter says, why would he be lying? Mm -hmm. Are we to believe that he is lying? Because I think what they're trying to do here is I think they're trying to set up the billionaire as the red herring. For the hunter that's mm. killing these young girls uh, and, and, is, and is, you know, recreating this most dangerous game scenario. Um, which a young girl who's been like doped up and kept in a room and is just running straight in an open field and shooting her in the back. With a little like laser. With like, a laser, yeah, with a laser. Like, like, like <laughs> you're not cool. You're no, not a but... fucking like, you know. The dude in Jurassic Park 2, Lost World, who, who like, legit goes out and hunts a T-Rex. Like, that's a fucking hunter. Okay? <laughs> Shooting a girl in the back who's running from her life in a fucking open field with a laser pointer. Yeah, <laughs> like, come on. Not very hard. It's not tough. No. You're not cool. You're not tough. And you had her locked in a room, so you might as well just killed her there. Like, he wants to shoot her. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I think they're setting the billionaire up to be the guy, because he stops at this uh audrey's car uh -huh. 
and it makes it seem like he's might gonna he might abduct her yeah. right like it kind of thought that for a second Harrison runs off with the phone then he comes back and she's gone and this guy's abducted her yeah um it makes it feel like that because she calls him out and he's like oh he's trying to be cool about it like yeah. oh you're a hypocrite but I mean we're complicated you know sure. species yeah. and blah 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 um but I'm I'm like a hundred percent positive that Kurt uh, Caldwell is is the killer here, and that's going to be the Trinity. That's going to be the you know apocalypse killer. It's gonna be, you know the big killer sure. of the show. Now, um, well, and if it is Kurt, then I do feel like it's a setup on purpose to specifically get Dexter in some way, which. You know, it's like how does how would he know that it's Dexter Already, and, and all of that? But it, I, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how else he could. He's drunk, right? Yes. So or is he? Or is he right? Like right. he could be pretending. If it's a setup, it's all just a. It just seems to get very him convenient. There, but... Dexter's driving by yes. in that moment and would stop to talk to him, and it's all part of his ploy to have Dexter pick him up. You're the, right, it, especially because Dexter's driving from having incinerated the body parts. Yes. So it's not like he was driving home from work or something and sees him. Like, there's no planned route that he's, you know. That's, but, that incinerator felt very convenient yes, to me in the moment. I, I really was liking the idea of the mine shaft. I thought that Seems was like cool. something Dexter would know existed yeah. in case he ever did it and would have it as a backup plan. Right? It seems I, very odd to yeah. me that he's like last minute, oh yeah, there's like an open incinerator that's always burning in sure. the middle of the night that I can sneak a body into. I don't know. That felt a tad lazy to me. I, I get that wise. too. Like, I mean, he gets the idea from when they, they do their ceremony for the, the white buck. But Dexter's but somebody who right. keeps and it, also, things in his mind. And also, I definitely thought that that, like, it seemed like an incinerator that would be open 24 hours would have cameras. Sure. Because of... Because of people that. People burning bodies. <laughs> because of people burning yeah. bodies, sure. So, that seems like lazy writing to me, but, that part. You know, I, yeah, I agree, but I can I can overlook it. I think it's fine, and um, it is what it is. Yeah. But I agree. I think that it, I was really enjoying the mine shaft idea. I thought that was going to be kind of cool, and then the bears in there. and Yeah. Um, it's already so, inhabited. So I'm definitely thinking that one of two things is happening. Kurt Caldwell... If he is the hunter, which I'm pretty much positive that he is, that he's either hunting Dexter in one of these episodes, whether it's towards the end or earlier, I don't know. Um, it could be earlier because with Dexter, he usually finds out someone's a killer pretty early on mm. when it's the Trinity killer or the ice truck killer or whoever the fuck. He always seems to find out their identity mm. pretty quick. And they also seem to have a back and forth, a dialogue, a friendship, a, you know, um, a rivalry, rivalry. Yeah. I've always, rivalry. I think I said that right the first rivalry. time. Rivalry. Rival. I, rivalry. It's one of those words. What's your word? Rivalry. What's your guys' word? Yeah. What's your word? Do you have a word? That's always uh, been my word my whole life that I've, that I struggle to say. No, no, no. I have word? a lot of ones that I say incorrectly. There was one that I said the other day. I can't remember what it was that you were like, you were like uh, taken aback, but yeah, uh, I don't remember. remember. I can't remember what it was, but, but right? I do remember that. Yeah. Um, golf. Weird. Golf. So I used to say golf. Oh yeah. <laughs> golf. Uh, golf. <laughs> golf. Um, <laughs> but anyways, I think that he's either going to hunt Harrison because it's like you took my son. I'm going to take yours. And Harrison, of course, is is uh, a survivor and and is smarter than he might think he is mm -hmm. and escapes. Uh, or Dexter is going to find out about it and try to help Harrison out, or he's going to be hunting Dexter. Or I guess he could even get the sheriff, since he seems to like, seems or maybe even the sheriff's daughter. Yeah. You know, somebody yeah. who Dexter cares about because he does refer to all four of them, as including himself. So three of them uh, as a family and yeah. something he has to grasp onto yes. for dear life like he missed this he wants this like that's what he was trying to do with Rita right right like he and and he kind of abandoned that when he had this opportunity with Hannah and I guess he feels like he has a uh third chance here well, that's of a family thing, right? and that's kind of what Deb is always you know is saying to him uh that 
people that he gets close to, he ends up hurting and putting in harm's way. So all his families fail, you know, sure. at the end of the day. So well, when you're a serial killer, yes, you're, um, you're probably going to fuck things up around your family. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I'm very worried for him, though. I definitely feel like he is going to... I don't know, though. I, I like the tension. I don't know if he's actually going to get caught, but I, I've felt worried for him these last two episodes just because it's like, you know, there's... Uh, heat cameras or infrared or whatever they're called heat, signatures, um, yeah. heat signature cameras in the woods that he didn't know about and he's on one of them and then they have the CSI guy who um, does a good job at analyzing the, the yeah. blood and, and the scene in general so he's made to look um, like a goof yeah but then he's good but at then he's job. actually good at it which I, yeah. I thought was going to happen um, but I think Dexter's regaining some of his of his edge but um at least the last two episodes, yeah, I was nervous for him. Well, so. Deputy Logan, I think, is his name. The, 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 the one that interviewed him? Yeah. Yeah, he was He's suspicious. called Logan, right? Yeah. And is he a deputy? I think so. Or okay, so if his name really is Deputy Logan, then we've got multiple um, Halloween nods now. Mm. So there's a kid in this show who wears a different horror shirt. Like, every day. He's one of the jock kids. He was wearing a straight-up Halloween shirt with Dr. Loomis and, and Michael Myers and everybody on it. Uh, you could see it through his Letterman mm. jacket. And then you see it for a fraction of a second uh, on the second day when um, the bully kid gets choked out by Harrison. He's wearing a creep show shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and then Deputy Logan would be... From Halloween 4, mm -hmm. the guy who gets folded into the corner uh, before Rachel finds his body. Um, but And then also the principal's name. Well, was. I guess, I'm sorry. She, well, she, Rachel finds his body, but the first person <laughs> who finds his body is uh, Kelly Meeker. I had to make sure that we're very specific <laughs> very about clear. that. Yeah, anyways. Uh, yeah, and then the principal's last name is Strode. Yes, the so. Str thank you. Yeah. That's the other one. Yeah, yeah. Which so. is cool. And we're seeing a lot of this. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of this. Um, what are the actors' names in this? Is or is that in the last show? I was looking through their names. No, I think it was in. Uh, it wasn't. In Yellow Jackets. Yeah, in Yellow Jackets, the actor's last name is Kruger, uh, but it's the actual actor's name. Oh, cool. Almost like Deborah Sue Voorhees from Friday Just the Thirteenth Five. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so. Um, yeah, I definitely, I, I'm, the thing I'm most curious about here is what's going on with Kurt mm -hmm. and this FaceTime call that he had. Yes. Now, they make Harrison out to be a genius. Um, he has the highest score placement test um, ever, and he's did it in 15 minutes, and he does it again and gets an even higher score, so he's definitely doing it for real. Mm. Um, and also this cat is trying to drink. Stop. <laughs> um, I, she made me lose my train of oh, thought. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> like, you really don't drink the okay. water. No, yeah, so I, Harrison... I, my point was going to be is that Harrison potentially could be the one who somehow set this up. Right. Yeah. I just don't see how. How could he make it look like the kid and everything? I don't know. It's a FaceTime. Unless if it was, was a phone call, sure. but he specifically says FaceTime. We, I, and he's very clear about it. I saw my son's right. face. So, like they very much like didn't leave that to any kind of speculation. Yeah, unless like, Harrison is some kind of like tech genius who can make a crazy filter. That looks like his son. No, I, I mean, Which maybe, I is, but I highly doubt it. Yeah, I don't think that's what's going on. He's lying. Yes, but I think why? he's lying, but why is the big question. He wants so. everyone to think his son's alive. Why? Yeah. Because it's going to bring too much attention to his... I mean, he's pushing, though, right? He's pushing yes. for them to investigate. Yes. But maybe he thinks it's going to lead them to his murder cabin. Sure. I don't see that, though, because he's yeah. pushing them so hard to find his son, and then all of a sudden he's going to be like, never mind. So either he's being tricked by somebody, or he's tricking other people. He's got cameras on, on the incinerator. 
<laughs> he's like but as I said like the convenience <laughs> of him Dexter. coming out and breaking the bottle in front of Dexter and yeah. let's get in the car oh no, yes yeah it's too much yeah. for me I mean it's impossible and I'll accept it if that's the way they go I just I don't know the yeah. incinerator felt like lazy writing and that would also kind of feel like lazy yeah. writing so, to me as well but it is what it is we'll have to see what happens next next episode but I'm very excited every time we watch a new episode of Dexter. It's like, it's been really cool. And it's really exciting to have it back after Absolutely. so long. So Absolutely. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I have anything else to I say. I don't think so either. I'm looking at all the characters, trying to see if I can remember anything. But, uh, I think that's, I think that's it for now. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, we'll see. What do you guys think? Where are you at with this show? And uh, this is 10 episodes, right? I think this season's 10 episodes. <laughs> 10. Supposedly 10. I'll probably... Yeah, it's called Sins of Our, of the Father Ooh. on January 9th. So we don't even finish this until next year. Ooh, 2022. Yeah, the next one is called H is for Hero. Hmm. What that means... Uh, H is for Harrison. H is for Hero. So... What would the hero be? That's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, somebody's going to do something heroic. Will it be Harrison? Will it be Dexter? Will it be the, his girlfriend cop? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. We'll find out. Let us know what you think. Bye. Bye.